This is a webcast for A Mother in a Refugee Camp, the poem by Chinue Achebe, for the Edexcel Certificate Anthology Section C. During this screencast, you will need a copy of the poem, pens, paper, highlighters, and access to the internet. When you see this post-it note appear, it means that you will be required to do something. This may be to make some notes, to annotate, to mind map. It may just be a thinking point. Before we start the poem, you will need to be aware of some useful vocabulary that appears in the poem that you may not be familiar with. Please take note that some of these spellings are American spellings, not British English. When quoting the poem, you will need to quote the, the words exactly as they appear in the poem and not using British English. Please, please press pause now to make a note of this useful vocabulary. Welcome back. Hopefully now you will feel more confident with some of the vocabulary as we go through the poem. I want you to think of images that come to mind when you think of these words, mother and child. Press pause now and make a mind map or a list. Welcome back. Did any of these images come to mind when you thought of the words mother and child? Think about comforting, caring, loving, nurturing. Now do another mind map, but place the mother and child in a specific setting, that of a refugee camp. Press pause now for your second mind map. Welcome back. Did you consider images like these? Think of words that spring to mind here pain, suffering, malnutrition, sadness, desperation. Yet if you can see in this picture, the mother is still trying to care for her desperately ill child. Here is the child taking on the parent's role. Here you will notice the distended stomachs and bellies of children who are suffering. Think back to the useful vocabulary that you learned earlier on and this idea of the Madonna and the child. Here is a painting that depicts the Madonna and the child. This is an iconic image and it means that it's incredibly well known. People are very familiar with this image and it's used as a symbol. So think about that literary word symbol for motherly love, for tenderness, for care, for affection. However, you will recall that Jesus' mother watched him die. So it's also a symbol for death and sacrifice. Now, if we think about the words in the poem, no mother and child can touch her tenderness for a son. She soon would have to forget. These powerful opening lines establish the theme of the poem, the power of a mother's love. It's almost equating the mother's love to being saintly by referring to the Madonna and the child. Even in the face of death, even in the setting of the refugee camp, the mother's love is that powerful. The poem itself. Take a moment, read the poem out loud to yourself two or three times. Remember that poems are intended to be heard aloud, not just simply read from a page. Press pause now to read the poem. Welcome back. We're now going to go through the poem in some close analysis, picking out important pieces of information. You will need the poem in front of you. If you would prefer to annotate the poem, that's fine, but you also might like to make notes on some lined paper. Please feel free to press pause at any point if you wish to make notes. We have a lot of religious imagery in the poem, and if we look at the, the opening line, this iconic image of the Virgin Mary and Jesus. We've got the religious connotations likening the mother to a saint. We have to consider, as I've said, that Jesus died a tragic and brutal death witnessed by his mother. Are we being prepared for the mother soon witnessing the death, the untimely death, the tragic death of her child? We also see later on in the poem other images that we could suggest are religious. Washing, think about the traditional image in religious uh, 
um, terms of washing away our sins. Think about the word daily act further down in the poem. Does this remind us of the Lord's Prayer? We get lots of sensory imagery in the poem. Sensory imagery means imagery depicting the senses. We hear about the, or we learn about the smells of the camp, the odours of diarrhoea. The air is described as being heavy. Can you see here? This metaphor creates an atmosphere of being claustrophobic, an atmosphere that is incredibly overwhelming. The metaphor of the ghost smile might be slightly confusing for you. Think about this, a ghost signals death. So think about the connotations of the word, not just for the child, but also for the mother. Could her smile, her ghost smile, be because she is now a ghost of her former self? Is it because of her life in a refugee camp? Is it signaling to us that potentially she is close to death also? Lots of different ways to read that. We then get another metaphor, I think one of the most powerful ones in the poem, the rust colored hair on his skull and then humming in her eyes. The metaphor of rust connotes decay. The child's life appears to be ebbing away. Even the hair is being lost. It's not left on his skull. For me, rust also suggests quite a painful process, something that is dirty and difficult. And again, is this reflecting the child's experience? The simile, like putting flowers on a tiny grave, this equates what is usually a daily routine for a mother into now being an act of grief and love for a child's death. This image is filled with pathos, which means incredible sadness. Think about the idea of a mother putting flowers on her child's grave, when actually what she should be doing is performing a daily routine to prepare him for school, for life. You might want to notice words connected to time in this poem and think about how they're used by the poets. We also Notice words that suggest something that is broken. Look at the comb. Look at the hair that is just left. The half smile, the bodies. Are all of these words suggesting that this is a world that is indeed broken? This is a society that is indeed broken. I now want you to make a scassy table. You should be familiar with setting, character, action, style, ideas. Ask questions for each section rather than simply copying down what I've said. It's important that you are actively engaged in the reading of literature and not simply regurgitating, which means repeating, what you have heard by your teachers in class and on screencasts. Examiners will be familiar with these texts and they will be marking up to 2000 scripts. You want your response to be original, to be interesting, to be perceptive, to stand out. You want your own personal interpretations. This is where A-star grades come from. Press pause now and work your way through the setting questions, the character questions, the action questions, the style questions, and the ideas questions. Make sure that you're making notes on why the poet has made certain choices. I cannot emphasize this highly enough. You do not simply want to show what the poet has done. You need to think about the effects, why they have made those deliberate choices. Press pause now. Welcome back. For setting, did you think about the obvious? It's set in a refugee camp. However, have you considered how the setting might change our behaviours, might affect our personality? Think back to our original screen where we had the image of the mother and child, and then we changed it into a different setting. 
is this poem saying something about the mothers particularly in refugee camps? Do they become tired? Do they become despondent and dispassionate towards their children? Or do we still see an even more fierce love in the face of such devastating circumstances? For character, the obvious, a mother and a son. How is this mother different to the other mothers? For character, you might also want to remember to consider narrative voice. Who is telling the poem? Who is this other speaker in the poem? Don't confuse this with the poet. When we talk about the poet, we're talking about the effects of word choices. For action, I think one of the very interesting actions is the mother combing her son's rust-coloured hair. Our narrator, who we've just spoken of, remembers also how she used to bathe the child. Look at all of the mother's actions. Look at the verbs used by the poet to describe what she does for her child. Think about what these verbs reveal about the mother and how she feels about her child. This little act is noticeable as an act of love in the face of death. These little acts are things that should have been normal daily routines for a mother and a child, but take on much heavier, much more painful, much more sorrowful connotations in this setting. For style, you would want to consider that this is one continuous stanza. Is this perhaps reflecting a never-ending painful story? There is no break to their suffering. Could also suggest that the end is very near. The child's death is imminent. You'll notice that there are run-on lines. This is where we have enjambment, where there's no punctuation at the end of the line. Does this suggest that time is running out and speeding by? You'll also notice the use of ellipses. These signal different moments of time within the narrative, which means the story of the poem. The final section is ideas. This is over to you. Why do you think the poet wrote this poem? What do you think he was hoping to make the reader feel or think when they read the poem? You need to think about words such as innocence, loss, death, suffering, love, pride, social justice, injustice. Some small, uh, some brief biographical notes now for Achebe. He was a Nigerian poet and novelist, born in 1930. He is one of the most important living writers from Africa today. Very much concerned with politics and much of his writing considers social and political problems facing his country, which is Nigeria. I would absolutely recommend that you read his novel, things fall apart. It's very, very short, I promise you. Hugely successful novel, translated into many, many different languages, and it's a very powerful novel. Achebe has been criticised for writing in English rather than his natural um, native language. Think about that as you, when you read the poem. Finally, if you would like to develop your ideas more and your understanding more, which I assume you would all want to, as I've said, I think you should read the novel. Do some more research on Achebe. As I said, he's still around. Find out more. Read some more of his poems. Try a thinking hat's approach. Approach the poem purely from a green hat perspective or purely from a red hat or a white hat. This is a really useful technique for pulling out different meanings of the poem, different connotations. You might want to create an imagery mind map or a sto storyboard recreating the images that are presented in the poem. I've also given you a website where a fantastic teacher, I don't know who, has annotated the poem line by line. This might help you also. Very best of luck with your examination.